Good evening. Today is August 30th, 2017, and this is the first video entry for the Yaki Human Rights uh, Clinic. This vlog series will be done weekly in an effort to provide better communication to not only students in the clinic, but research fellows and a number of stakeholders. You'll see very quickly there's a lot going on with uh, different moving parts. So uh, the purpose of this video is very simple. I'm just going to outline some of the main objectives uh, that the clinic uh, has currently underway. And um, we will be using this as an opportunity to track uh, progress on these um, uh, distinct or sub-projects, if you will. OK, so the first uh, project. The Yaki Catfish. Uh, at this point, we're embarking upon um, a major uh, initiative. Uh, on September 22nd, we have made tentative plans uh, to work with our partners at Unison, uh, principally Dr. Uh, Alejandro Valera, who is the former, foremost expert on the Yaki Catfish, in addition to uh, a range of other freshwater fish species in the Yaki Basin. And so we will be planning a trip uh, to the Cajon Bonito, which is in northern Sonora, immediately south of the Arizona border, approximately 20 miles east of Agua Prieta. Uh, we'll be working with a, a non-profit uh, that has um, property in the uh, refuge on the uh, Sonora side. As well, we'll be joined by uh, Dr. Chuck Minkley, uh, retired field a marine biologist with the Fish and Wildlife Service. We've obtained the necessary permits from the uh, federal government in, in Mexico to uh, collect and uh, to take the necessary um, DNA samples uh, from the fish under Dr. Valero's charge. So the opportunity uh, that this trip presents is threefold. First, um, the field work in terms of the assessment of the fish's overall status has not been done since the early 1990s. This is uh, of great importance given that the catfish itself, El Bagrayaki, has been extirpated from the United States as of 2015. So. The opportunity in the Cajon Bonito is significant because it represents the most proximate habitat to the uh, designated um, area in the San Bernardino National Wildlife Refuge. Because the Cajon Bonito is situated um, south, approximately six miles um, to the southeast. Okay, so that's important because we have to know where the fish is and uh, that's really the closest um, proximity in terms of its range to where it once was in the United States. And also that's the most northern reach of the fish in Mexico because it's right on the border. Second, it's important that we have the other stakeholders from the um, Yaqui community. And so A, we are working right now with the Paspo Yaqui tribe to make sure that we have uh, the appropriate um, representation and participation uh, in this effort. So we're working through the tribe's uh, language and culture department and one of the clinic fellows, um, a PhD candidate and tribal member, uh, Annabelle Galindo, uh, will be assisting us. So uh, that's underway. The second part within this um, tribal participation model is the input and participation from the Rio Yaqui Pueblos. This is really, really important um, because not only do they represent the voice of the Yaqui people in Sonora, but uh, moreover, the delta where their traditional territory is located um, has been, um, you know, for lack of a better word, decimated. There's really no other way to describe it. Um, and that delta would, would have represented the southernmost reach of the uh, Yaqui catfish in the Yaqui Basin. Uh, we'll learn that the Yaqui catfish, interestingly, has um, a reach that goes further south 
uh, into the uh, Sinaloa area, which would mean that it, it um, was able to move uh, out of the, the Yaqui Basin and go further southeast. And so that's going to be material that Dr. Valera is going to be covering for us. So this is a, a really important opportunity for, uh, for voice, for participation and expression. It's also an important opportunity legally. Uh, again, we'll be exploring this further. But the um, interesting thing about the Cardinals Decree, which speaks directly uh, to the um, scope of Yaqui water rights in Mexico, is its reference to uh, the Angostura Reservoir and the 50% uh, reserve of uh, water in that reservoir. The, that reserve of water is located uh, less than 100 kilometers from the San Bernardino National Wildlife um, boundary line. Why is that important? Um, in other words, just to be clear, if you stand at the head gate of the Angostura um, Dam and turn north, the distance to the border and it is at the border that the San Bernardino National Wildlife is located, exactly on the border, it is less than 100 kilometers. It's close, it's in the range of 80 to 90 kilometers, but the point is it falls within the territorial uh, boundary line of a 1982 agreement that was signed between Mexico and the United States called the La Paz Agreement. And that agreement is a transboundary um, MOU effectively on um, the expression of uh, goodwill by both nations to um, tend to the um, transboundary environmental issues dealing with environmental pollution and uh, related concerns. So if we look at the role of the catfish, the fact that the catfish has been extirpated from the United States within that zone, A, first and foremost prescribed by the La Paz Agreement, B, that it's been extir extirpated um, from the United States, that's B, and C, that its most northern habitat is under stress, um, that the La Paz Agreement gives some um, soft law background to this. I'll be getting into this further, but another important point to keep in mind is that it's very easy to think of the fish as um, empirically, like with what you would see with your own eyes, as just a small population of catfish in a little pond <laughs> along the border, which is true. That's, in the United States, that was the fate of the fish before it went extinct or was extir extirpated two years ago. Uh, the range of the fish, however, in the United States was much broader and much more robust, and it was um, a reflection of the availability of surface water in the um, Douglas Basin, which is a sub-basin in the southeast pocket of Arizona. And related to this is the significance of the treatment of the water systems in Arizona, in New Mexico, and Sonora. So we're going to get into that further. Again, so the fish is just a nice way to literally put the models, the different legal models together and the different frameworks together uh, around what was traditional Yaqui territory. And that, that's a very, very novel idea, by the way. Um, novel in the sense that it's not something that is discussed in the popular language, given the terms of reference of the Yaqui territory in the Delta. So one of the objectives to come full circle of the clinic is really to get people thinking about the Yaqui Basin as a, as a complete um, biosphere, if you will, as a complete um, dwelling, uh, as a place where people, um, Yaquis, once lived throughout. And you can mark that by the ecology, and one of the markers is the existence of freshwater um, fish species. And again, the Yaki catfish is a good example. And finally, that brings me to New Mexico. New Mexico actually recognizes the Yaki Basin. It is one of the managed water districts under New Mexico's state law. So we'll see in Hidalgo County, which is in the southwest pocket 
of New Mexico, right along the border with Arizona and Sonora, we'll see that uh, in Hidalgo County there is a, uh, a groundwater district called the Yaqui Water District, and that's that's in reference to the binational nature of the Yaqui Aquifer. So we've got a lot of complicated map making and puzzles to put together, and to back up, being able to get into the Cajon Benito is the first important step if we're all in agreement, the stakeholders, that we're going to use the fish as the proxy, at least for the first couple of steps, then the Cajon Benito uh, trip in September is really, really quite important. So uh, there will be more information on that as that project grows. The other um, things that we're working on in the clinic is uh, we'll be posting the videos and uh, materials from the um, Unison um, conference that we held three weeks ago now on the um, Yaki Delta. We were able to get a lot of positive feedback and constructive feedback on how to um, address certain uh, planning issues because it was our first time doing this. It was also our first time working with Unison on this, so there were some really interesting differences there as well. So we're confident that if we do another one, which we would like to do maybe in November, we'll be able to um, address some of these uh, um, constructive issues that have been raised. Mainly the idea that we would cut the uh, format in half, reduce the academic participation by at least 50%, and more importantly, organize the conference around small working groups led by community members, and then have these community members within their own community teams with an area of focus um, join together in the afternoon after they've spent the morning working within their smaller groups, joining together in the afternoon to have these plenary sessions that are recorded to memorialize the, uh, the discussions and so that everyone can kind of learn um, from these different perspectives. Topics, for example, like water, um, jurisdiction, things of that nature would be um, the, the kind of subheadings that would form the nature of these smaller uh, group discussions. And then the other project uh, that's ongoing deals with the advocacy component uh, of the, um, the Yaki Human Rights Project. Um, so there is a, a, an ongoing uh, advocacy uh, litigation-based prong to this, and I'm not going to go into great detail about that at the moment, uh, although I will visit it in due course. Um, we're just finishing the drafting of an important submission and then uh, from that we will uh, be reaching out to a number of stakeholders. It's at that time when I start reaching out to other stakeholders that I will um, bring forward to the uh, vlog and uh, to the other venues that we have information on what it is that we're doing. Because that would also entail the uh, need to have our uh, stakeholders and the client group in this case uh, provide the direction to do that because we're not filing this on the clinic's sole behalf, we're filing it on behalf of a group of the Yaki petitioners. In any event, that's, uh, that's our charge, so we will, uh, we will keep you posted. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and um, have a good evening. Bye for now.